Hi everyone, um, this is Sofia Huitron. Um, glad to finally get to meet you, I guess, uh, online. So hi Dr. Purcell and hi everyone at TCH uh, 432. So this will be my presentation for my CMS. Um, I'll start exploring in just a minute. Um, so I teach first grade dual language and I decided to use Weebly to create my CMS. Um, so let me walk you through it and then I'll answer um, the questions towards the end of the of the screencast. So um, so this is a main page um, and I, I just named it First Grade Journey. Um, at the bottom there's a blog so I, I just put a few posts. Um, I just made a, a simple welcome um, you know to first grade uh, like a sample post and then I um, actually this is where I added um, the first um, disciplinary technology asset, I created a meme. So one of the things that um, happens a lot in my classroom is students don't read and that's pretty much the only homework they have. In first grade it's very important for them to, to practice their reading every day um, because they're expected to learn how to read at the end of first grade. So I just made a little post, you know, kind of for parents and students reminding them that they need to read every day and, you know, in a way being a little sarcastic about, you know, oh, you know, I get the silliest reasons all the time of why they didn't read. So I, I decided to create this to kind of send a message to parents and to students like, really, you didn't have 20 minutes to read? Well, then, you know, come on, tell me why why you couldn't do it. Um, so I thought it was, was kind of funny to do that. And then actually, this is um, my second disciplinary technology asset. Uh, and as a follow-up to the previous post, I thought it would be a good idea to create a... Um, a tutorial for uh, online reading resources that are available to my students and I'll, I'll point out where they are under the resources tab these are actually all accessible through the symbol that I have for them but um, this specifically focuses on those resources that are available to them for reading and how to log in how to navigate um, just in case they forget or, or parents don't know how to do it just you know it's a quick video that shows them how they can access five different resources um, so they can read online and um, three out of the five are actually available in, in Spanish so there's plenty of resources for them so then this is uh, also on the on the um, right here is the first place where parents can find all my contact information uh, a link to the um, school website and to our Twitter account so that's that's all here for them and then if you scroll back up and if you click on learn more um, it takes you to the page uh, called Information for Parents, and I, I don't really have a syllabus. I don't really have a syllabus for first grade, but um, I do have a parent packet that I send home on the first day of school. So I guess this is kind of like my syllabus. Um, so you know, it just gives them information about things, important information in the classroom that they need to be aware of. Um, I normally send this obviously in paper form, but I thought this would you know be a good way to incorporate it into my CMS. So again, it's just a letter to them that I sent home on the first day. But then I added additional resources that I thought would would be beneficial uh, for them. So I added the a PowerPoint slide that I go over during open house, which uh, our school has actually changed, and it's actually now on the first day of school. So it's it's actually works out better because they get to give them all the information and they, they get to hear it from day one. Uh, in the past, open house was sometimes a few weeks in and then, you know, by then we've already established routines. It's better to have the parents on the same page since day one. The presentation is the presentation I used this school year. So you'll notice the date, you know, it says 2015, 2016. Obviously, I haven't updated it for next year. Uh, it is all in Spanish, but this is where... Uh, I guess I would have my course description and course objectives. Um, I kind of go through that in, during open house. Um, so, so that'll be here in the presentation. But uh, again, it's it's in Spanish. Um, I also included uh, our specials rotations. Uh, we have different groups for specials. And you know, students just need to know when, when they have what special. Because like when they have PE, they need to bring gym shoes. When they have LRC, they need to bring their school library book. So again, this is a paper I sent home. But I thought it would be uh, also useful to incorporate it here. And then um, I know there were a few optional elements we were supposed to include uh, in our CMS, so I decided to include uh, the report card rubric. We have a standards-based report card, so we use numbers, one through four, and there's a general overall rubric that we use for it, so I included it here. 
uh, and you can download the file. And then I also decided to include our con links to our content standards. So for literacy, math, science, and social studies, parents can you know um, access them for for our grade level. So that's that's here uh, information for parents. And then um, so for the course outline again, I don't I don't really have that for my students. I don't provide them um, an outline kind of how we were given for this course again because they're first graders. But I did um, kind of just created a two week schedule to kind of go over the topics or, or skills that we would be working on in any any given week. So these are things that I actually did do in my class. I just kind of looked up in my lesson plans and just created created this. So. Um, I think this is neat, actually. It gives parents an, an overview of what we're doing. So I actually think that this was a, a nice addition to, to the CMS. Again, just overall subjects, you know, our reading workshop, our writing workshop, our social studies, which actually um, our, content, our content is integrated with literacy. So the lessons, the many lessons that we do during our workshop um, actually go along later on. We carry over those, those skills with whatever we're doing in, in content, which for this particular unit, it was social studies. And then obviously math, whatever we're covering in math. So uh, I can definitely continue to add on to this. Um, maybe monthly, like given a monthly overview of what we're doing would be a, a good way to do it. But for this assignment, I, I did two weeks. Um, and then moving along to announcements. Uh, I know one of them was a video, but then I also included, there are two dates that we already know uh, when our back to school drop off is. Uh, we have a barbecue for parents and they get a chance to come and drop off their school supplies and meet the teacher. So that's, the date is already on there. And then our first day of school, which again, in the morning is when we also have open house. So I included these two in the announcements already. But then for the, um, I think it was a video or audio announcement that we, that we had to do, I we had Stephen Lane. Uh, he was our keynote speaker at the beginning of, of last school year. And he talked to us about igniting a passion for reading and how one of the ways we can do that is uh, having hot reads in the classroom where we highlight a book for students and we get them really excited about it. And um, I actually did that all throughout this year and I saw the huge difference it had in my students. I mean, some of the some of my students know books now. They can tell you who the author and the illustrator is. Um, Mo Willems is, is a big one in my classroom, obviously, in first grade. But um, so I thought it would be actually really neat. And, and I think this is one of the things that my students would like the most is maybe also a way to promote the website is um, and normally they wait to see what the next book on my stand is. I have a little sign that says Mrs. Witron's Hot Read and I change the book about every week and they're always looking forward to what the new book is going to be. So I thought, you know, if encouraging them to come and visit um, the classroom website, I would create a video and say, you know, if you get to see, if you get to visit the website, you're going to get a preview of the book. You're going to get to see what the book is before anyone else. And then when you come to school, you will already know what the book is going to be. Um, I think that would get them really excited. So I created this um, with the book that I just got, Last Stop on Market Street. And, and I created a short video for them to get them excited about, you know, my next hot read. And then moving along to um, assignments. So um, the individual assignment is actually the one that I used for the tool evaluation project. Um, they're creating um, a screencast um, video finding nonfiction text features in a nonfiction book. So uh, you can find this on my student page. This is uh, the assignment that I had posted on there. Um, but then I also created um, a group assignment, since we also had to have a group assignment. Um, this is a unit that we do in science. We learn about different types of rocks. So then they're going to do a scavenger hunt looking for uh, things that are made of rocks and what types of rocks. We learned about five types of rocks specifically. Pebbles, gravel, sand, silt, and clay. Um, this is actually something that I did do in my class, but... Um, not 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 in this way like I didn't do a group work they're actually creating a padlet together as a group so it's something that we did do as as a class but not in this way and actually I'm actually really excited about using this um, assignment next year um, because it incorporates you know a lot more technology and, and collaboration so um, padlet is actually the tool that I highlight under tech tools and I'll talk about that in just a minute but um, so kind of using that, they work as a team and they create a padlet together after they've done a scavenger hunt outside around the school looking for things that are made of rocks. And then they'll tell me, you know, 
um, I don't know, sidewalk, uh, there's gravel and pebbles that go into making a sidewalk or, you know, mud, there's clay and mud. So things like that is kind of what, what we did and what I would envision them doing for, for this. So again, just detailed instructions of, of how to do it. And so then moving on to tech tools. Um, again, so the, the tech tool that I decided to highlight, um, the digital tech tool, was um, Padlet. And this is actually where my third disciplinary technology asset is. I created an infographic uh, using Padlet, and it um, goes along with our science unit on uh, the the plant life cycle. So we also learn, you know, we learn the different parts of the plants, but we also learn that we eat different parts of a plant. So this is just kind of like an infographic that tells them, you know, uh, certain plants and vegetables, what, what are we eating? You know, we're eating, sometimes we're eating the roots of the plant. Sometimes we're eating the stems. Sometimes we eat the leaves. Sometimes we're eating the fruit. Sometimes we're eating the seeds. And sometimes we're eating the flower. So this is just, again, a uh, small infographic on uh, the different parts of the plant that we eat. Uh, and then we also had to include other tech tools. I couldn't just decide on two or three. There are several that I use and that I think my students really enjoy. So I actually chose five. I wrote a very brief description for each one. So I um, highlight um, Lenzu, Pick Collage, Thing Link, Comic Strip It, and Sketch for my students. Um, and then uh, moving on to resources. So I, I do currently use this in the classroom. Obviously, uh, now I'm incorporating into my CMS. But um, so this symbol has um, bookmarks pretty much to everything we use in the classroom. So uh, these five tiles here are the ones that I highlight in my screencast tutorial. These are all reading um, websites that they can use. Seesaw is our digital portfolio um, app and it's also uh, our blog. And then in this corner here is math. Um, we have I have an extra math account for them and our district pays for um, IXL math accounts for them. Um, other websites that we use like ABC Mouse and Starfall, that's all here. Um, on this bottom left corner um, is where I link all the things that I've created for them for different social studies units. Like the top four are all, you know, Ed Puzzle videos that I created for them and Padlets that I created for them um, for our geography unit on regions. And then the bottom ones are, again, Padlets and articles that I created for them when we were learning about uh, history, the past and the present. So that's that's that. That's where they can find that on this other uh, corner uh, on the right. Uh, things like Time for Kids and Scholastic, uh, National Geographic, Brain Pop Junior. Um, in this middle section here are all the safe search engines for, for students. Kittle is, an, is a fairly new one. This is a um, a search uh, image search engine, so you can search for uh, images and it's safe for, for kids. It's created by Google, and then KidRex, another one, Kitopia, uh, and and so on. Um, and then also I have the links for um, Destiny Quest, which is our library school library where you can look up books in the school library, and then our um, website for our LRC. So again, these are most of these we use a lot in the classroom. Some of them I introduce throughout the year. But this, this will be a, a place where they can access them. They access them now in the classroom, but now with this website, they can also access all of these from home. So I'm really excited about that. And then um, the last one is just a page where they, again, uh, have all my contact information. And they can also send me a quick message. Um, but I provide my phone number, my email, and then, again, this message if they want to reach me, like, through, through this as well. So um, just to finish up, uh, I don't want to make this any longer. Um, so I, I am pretty excited actually about uh, using this. I know I have to go back and translate a few things. Most of the communication, uh, actually all of the communication that I have with my parents is in Spanish. But for this assignment, I know some things obviously have to be in English so, so the professor can understand them. But um, so uh, very excited about having everything in one place. I realized when I was creating this that um, all of the things I kind of already do in my classroom, it was just kind of finding a place where, where to put them all, all in one place. But um, I, I mean, I did have to create a lot of the, the, the things that, you know, specifically were required for the CMS, but other things I kind of already had, and it was just a matter of piecing it and putting it where, where it goes. Um, so I'm really excited about that. I guess I hadn't thought of 
creating something like this and incorporating everything that I do, you know, through tabs and through different, different, different things. Um, the only thing is, I don't know how much the website will actually be utilized by parents. Unfortunately, as I know, I've mentioned throughout discussions, you know, I live, I work in a um, very low income area school and most of our students don't have access to internet at home or computers at home. Very few get taken to the public library. Um, so, I, and, and our parents aren't very familiar with how to navigate technology. So, um, I sure plan to promote it. I just don't know how much it will actually be, you know, used by, by parents. Uh, hopefully by students at home, as long as they have access to it. Um, one of the things that I think will excite my students about it is, um, you know, in the announcement section, the video I created, I thought, I think it, that will be a really neat way to get them even more excited about reading books. Um, in, a, in a way, it kind of has two purposes, you know, promoting the website, because I know they'll want to know what the next book is, they'll want to have that upper hand, and it'll get them to visit the page, but then they'll also be exciting about learning about new books, which is what we want them to do. We want them to get excited about reading, and we, we do it in any form that we can. So that's that. That's my CMS. I hope you guys enjoy it. I know that a lot of you aren't in elementary, so a lot of the things might seem odd to you, but this is a, this is a life of a first grade classroom. This is what we do, and I'm really, really excited um, to share it with you guys, and I, I can't wait to see your projects. Bye.